Mother Man. Hey, this is Justin, and you're listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Let's get our podcasting on. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666-mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal What the fuck's going on, motherfuckers? What's up, man? It's How's Tuesday. It yes, it is Tuesday. Doing the fucking podcast once more again. That's right. Episode 102. Fuck yeah, brother. Hell Crushing yeah. that shit. Got a really crazy one tonight. It's going to be a good one. I'm pretty pumped for this. It's I am uh, glad we have people with knowledge going to be in on this one we this do. evening. Dude. Like, we do need it. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know much about the situation he's in the murder is fucked up but it is um, it is and it's gonna be a good one we got joey gormonger in here with us once oh yeah. again i oh can't yeah. evict up, him brother? man no trying to evict going. him can't uh can he's holding <laughs> out man he's calling corona <laughs> like, yeah. calling it a corona thing and we've got a very special guest here yes, in studio yes, with us, do. Justin Morris, man. How's uh, it going, Justin? Hey, what's going on, guys? Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. A friend of the show and a loyal listener since we started doing this, man. I remember like right in the beginning, you were getting a hold of me and yeah, was, just posting comments. And it's cool because when, especially when we started out, you know, you really don't know what other people think of it. Because, right, you like, know, uh, like we were just yeah. talking, you hear your own voice and it sounds kind of weird. And then when you hear it back, you're like, I don't know if that sounds yeah, good. Yeah, that sound yeah. like So the feedback was welcomed. So, yeah, so we appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons you're here, because you were a runner-up in the March Mayhem. And it was funny, because it was between you and Stephanie there at the end. And, um, you know, we knew you were local, and she's from Toledo. So we're like, well, if Justin wins probably have him come actually easy. here and this is nothing against yeah. yeah so we knew she was from out of state so anyway i mean you're not asking people to come to fucking hayworth illinois well yeah <laughs> it's, uh, there's not a whole lot here the you nightlife know, in hayworth yeah. just, just is just like my, my tone's like just as small <laughs> yeah for sure so it worked out great and you've made some really good suggestions you Thanks. know we did the benoit episode oh, and, yeah. that was great and uh yeah and the uh the other one was the, the, Beeson, uh, the murders. Beeson murders the Beeson. Oh, yeah, yeah that was yeah, a good one Fuck yeah. awful story but a good uh a good episode so yeah so it's very cool to have you here and uh what about your first reactions justin <laughs> the horns high man i'm still trying to get it all sink in like this is amazing like yeah, it's oh, just, yeah there's dude. so much to look at. There's a lot it, going on in yeah, this room. It's and, different and it's, than you think when you see the pictures. Yeah, the it? pictures don't do it justice. This is amazing. Oh, okay. yeah, amazing. Dude. And you thought that this was a lot bigger oh, of a space, too. Yeah, I thought it was about three times the size. So. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, so nope. it's funny because, uh, yeah. We're to button this bitch. It's, it's, <laughs> well, at first, we were going to make it even a little smaller, remember? Right. And we went a little, so I'm glad we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was a good idea. So, oh, yeah, because you wanted to make it this big. I was like, hey, well, there's already a stud in this wall here. If we right, go a another, further. like, uh, eight inches. Right. Like, which eight inches is more than you think. Yeah, Ask for any sure. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so last week was a good one. We did a bonus, Chris, uh, how we create Murder Metal Mayhem. That was a fun time. Cashman, did you enjoy sitting in on that shit? Yeah. No, that was a cool That one. was like, cool. Yeah. We had some really good responses to that. And I know, Justin, you said that you found some of the stuff we talked about was surprising. You know, you yeah, didn't that... know about the show. And, and now having now you'll really see how we do this being here tonight um i think it might even make all that even make that much more sense that's so. what i was about to say is it makes a lot more sense after seeing it all and yeah because i think with my recording background doing band stuff to me i just when we started talking about this i'm putting it in those terms like okay i got two different vocals maybe a little this, background yeah, music yeah. and i'm thinking of yeah. it but track by track and i don't know how another podcaster would look at it had they not had that background that i don't maybe. have any I, idea you never know other others so, might but the yes. way you do it like dun, dun, so yeah so the way we do it, it is you know the way that works for us but of course everybody's got their own um and we did another uh well we had about 750 so far listens to uh that episode so that's really cool if you missed it go check that out 
It's just an hour and nine minutes, 69 minutes long. How about that? <laughs> on how we create Murder Metal Mayhem. Uh, we also had another it. one last week, a bonus guy. I couldn't believe nobody picked up on that when I, I posted it. I did not it. at all, dude. I was waiting for it. I did it. not yeah. at all. <laughs> um, that's like when I did the Low 12 movie, and it was six. It was it was an hour and six minutes, and I thought, that's funny. That's 66 minutes. And then I was like, within my like five seconds. seconds to make it six seconds, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, obviously, I add I'm going to drag this out a little longer. Yeah. Why would and you And so not? it was, uh, yeah, 666. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hell yeah. So anyway, sometimes it happens that way. And Tony Campagna, bonus, uh, another bonus last week, the interview with Tony from Spellbound Effects and Art, about 18 minutes of that. Very talented guy. And uh, if you missed that, go check that out. And, of course, we talk about Tony a lot because we love Spellbound Effects and Art. They send us all kinds of cool shit, Chris. I mean, it's pretty fucking hard to argue with. I can't say with this. I can't. If I, I would lie, if I was saying it was <laughs> not some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, That's Justin, what do you think, dude? The lamp, the lamp, and, and the yeah. I had to touch it, and I really wanted to touch it more, but I didn't want to knock it over. <laughs> but that was my first. It's very reaction. realistic, like, dude. Look at like, you see the teeth at the fucking bottom, bro. Oh no, How I did not see that. How fucking creepy is that? Yeah, shit? it's the, all the stuff he does is so amazing, and I, I. Just uh, uh, we do appearances with the forearm and everybody's wanting to take pictures with it and stuff. So it's cool. So. Uh, so, yeah, we love that stuff. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing a feature that Justin suggested uh, several yes, months sir. ago. Um, and it does take a while, Chris, as you know, for stuff to end up on a podcast schedule. Because, uh, you know, we when got you have a, a list, list that like we can do for another things year long. or whatever, at yeah. least like. Holy fuck, man. Yeah, and that's the schedule. Of course, the listeners don't know this, but our 666 Club members do the upcoming uh, schedule um, up there on the board. So we're out like three, four months out, and we still have a list of other topics. So it takes a while for and something to work in. other ones get thrown in there. Like, we got a list of them, dude. Like, yeah. Let's show it to you. You'd be like, that one. We might do that one because you suggested again, dude. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> there's some really good ones on the list that we haven't done yet. So, but tonight, a very fucked up story. Uh, uh, the wrestler Bruiser Brody. We've had a few listeners really loving on the fact that we were doing this uh, topic. So definitely going to be fun to do. Going to get gutted, big time. Um, now, as we've said before, Chris, you and I are not wrestling fans. Right. I mean, I could appreciate it, but it's just not my thing. Not at all. And that's why it we was like to have like somebody like Justin and CK in here. Yeah, dude, CK's they, all about it. You guys got wrestling knowledge. I have none. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I watched a little bit when I was in like uh, like eight, nine, whatever, but it wasn't much. I didn't get into it. So yeah. and I got a lot of friends that are into it, too. Yeah, a lot of people are because we got a ton of listens to episode 53 on Chris Benoit, number right. three. Or I'm sorry, is it number three or two? The third most listened to episode that we've ever done was the Benoit episode. And, of course, the Benoit Anger management commercials are fun to do, <laughs> what? too. <laughs> and we got a new commercial for you tonight, a little Shawback drunk tonight. Oh, shit on me. So, man. obviously, our listeners are into wrestling, so Bruiser Brody should be a good one to do. That's we'll, cool that Justin suggested both uh, yeah, the wrestling, the wrestling episodes, and yeah. now he's here with us. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, that's awesome. fucking awesome. Wait, bro. there's more. <laughs> there's more. CK. I didn't know the fact you said, I got notes on this bitch. <laughs> I'm about to school you motherfuckers. <laughs> CK, yeah. CK is ready to go on Wild Man Street there in Danbury, Connecticut. He's going to join us early for the murder segment because, like we said, he wanted to talk about Bruiser Brody with us. And, of course, he played – the March Mayhem contest for Justin. So yep. that was really cool uh, that these guys will get to be together here talking about this tonight. So it's going to be fun. Fuck yeah. Um, and he's going to do his usual metal segment this time on Nasty Savage because they're fronted by a singer who's actually a wrestler. Huh. So that's right. cool. Well, I mean, he already did Fozzie. So. He did, yeah. So, yeah, Nasty right. Savage is a good one with Nasty Ronnie, the singer, is also a wrestler. Um, we have a new killer cage match tonight. This yes, is kind of do. an odd one here, Chris, but we got a couple of 
listeners to thank for these uh, random numbers that they yes, provided. Yes, we do. We have uh, Darla Dent Chastine and Cody Durst. So thanks for the numbers. And yeah. I hope your number wins. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Well, we Hell got yeah. another good one in store. It's uh, Dennis Nilsson versus <laughs> who, Joey? The fucking Menendez brothers. They were just yeah, in this before. Fuck. and I think they got their asses like sodomized oh, and man. beat to death. Have here. you met Dennis Nilsson? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. This yeah. could be an interesting fucking night <laughs> like, with shit, these guys. Dude. The battle of the fucking pussies, that's for sure. Uh, so we should have some fun with this battle one. Battle of the mussies. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to let Justin pick the variable. I actually came up with a total 10 oh, new list yeah. of variables. Awesome. So he's going to pick a random number okay. when we get to that spot, and uh, we'll see who he picks. So yeah, some wait. good ones Hell on the yeah. list this time, Chris. All right, huge thanks to all you guys out there listening. We really do appreciate it. We actually broke our record this past week of total listens, uh, 4,962. That's really fucking awesome. So thanks, everybody out there checking it out. Oh, yeah. um, that's total listens for the week, and we only had about 750 for the new bonus. So that's a lot of listens to, to the other, other episodes. Shit. Yeah, hell yeah. So that's really thank cool. Thank you guys so, out there listening. Fuck it. Yeah, all, all the, the new, new listeners. All the new listeners. Thank you. Keep it up. Yeah, keep, and keep, keep talking spreading about it, dude. Fuck yeah. Um, and we'll have a lot of shit on our plate tonight, man. We got an angry wrestler who's raging like a fucking beast, swinging that fucking <laughs> chain. Like a monster, homie, dude. He's pissed, and <laughs> someone just fucking stabbed his ass not once but twice, so we better get to it, Chris. And Justin, what the fuck do we need to do right now? Let's get our murder on. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Decapitated. Fuck, killed a cult. I love that fucking song. Fucking man. Poland. Brutal. Yep. Polish brutal. shit is yep. always brutal. Dude. Polish we got... death metal rules. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah dude. dude. We got CK here with us talking some what Bruiser up, Brody. What's up, man? Fuck yeah. What's up, gentlemen? We're here, and uh, of course, Justin's still here with us. He hasn't run away, and that's good. <laughs> How's it going, Justin? It's going <laughs> pretty yeah. good. And we got Joey Gormonger here and Michael Shaw back just kicking it, just hanging out, drinking a few, and listening to the discussion. So Holding Cheers, down the bottle of whiskey. So yeah. it's uh, all right in the world at Horn's High Studios. Okay, so. All right, well, very good. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about that wrestler, Bruiser Brody, and the crazy events that surrounded the murder. Definitely a mountain of a man with He's some big wild ass horse. fucking hair. He's and a big the, horse, love dude. the fucking <laughs> swing in the chain shit. I couldn't imagine catching that shit in the fucking side of the head. Oh, fuck. Uh, and that's why we got CK and Justin in here because we don't know shit about wrestling, Chris. I mean, I, I yep. followed it in the 80s. I actually dated a girl for uh, that lived down the street from me. Her dad worked for the WWF, like in the office. Oh, no shit. And he used to give us tickets all the time. And so I've been to probably half a dozen matches in the 80s, like the Hulk Hogan. Right, back you know, in the old school. Like yeah, the, old like, school stuff. Yeah, the old school, like Brody. Yeah, right in that time frame. So uh, so I, I have a little bit of knowledge, but that's that's where it stops. And so with these two in here with us, uh, definitely going to be cool. Because it does fit a true crime story, but with the wrestling angle, it's something we don't know a lot about. And so it's cool when we've got friends that know okay. more about it like when we did benoit we had adam in here with us and yeah. adam's all about wrestling you know adam so loved wrestling he dude. did yeah, like, well, still does but you know what i mean that, oh yeah like... now episode 53 that we did on chris benoit as i mentioned the third most listened to episode so obviously we got some wrestling fans out there so uh, welcome if that's your thing because we're going to talk about it joey what about you man we haven't mentioned any of your dealings with wrestling but uh I was probably kind of the same as you, like in the eighties when I was younger, like right a, a little bit, but right. I don't think like I had some of that the figures and all that, but most kids did. But it was never something that grew on me too big. Somewhere around, uh, you know, the two thousands or late nineties, like or 
Yeah, close to 2,000. I, I got into like a lot more like the death match, the Japanese death matches and shit. Right, the, the uh, bigger, more violent yeah, shit. Yeah, that, that, that shit was yeah, really yeah. fun to watch, and I uh, got into that for a bit, but then afterwards kind of fell off, and it was funny because, right. uh, I mean, for real, I probably haven't seen a wrestling shit in fucking a decade or whatever, and then the other day, I don't remember where we were at, I was over at Cody, Cody Durst, right? <laughs> but they were watching, you know what I'm saying, the wrestling right, thing. Right, right, and I'm right. just watching and I'm like, this shit's even crazier now than anything I can remember. Like, the fucking flashiness and the fucking, the storylines are like way more fucking crazy. Uh, I think back in the day they were trying to fucking maintain it. Michael's was like sitting a over here saying AEW. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Where now they're like, no, this is <laughs> entertainment. Yeah. We're going to show you how we do this. And so it's pretty fucking flashy now. A little more high flying. Though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now, Justin, what was it about the Bruiser Brody story that made you think to even bring it up? I mean, you're listening to the podcast and you made some good suggestions, but what was it about this story that kind of grabbed you as a good one? Well, for one, when I was growing up, I was scared to death of Bruiser Brody. Really? <laughs> oh, you yeah. You'd be watching him <laughs> on TV and shit. Like, arr, arr. Hell, yeah. I hope this guy never comes to my house. <laughs> like shit like that. Yeah, yeah. And like Joey was just saying back then, they, was trying, they were trying to make it more realistic. Yeah. You know? right. So you believed in these characters. Right, right. And then I heard about this and uh, then found out, you know, what like we'll get to later that he gets away with it. It's yeah. Like, okay, yeah. We, we need to. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a good story and, and totally fits any true crime fan. Even if you're not into wrestling could appreciate it just for that, you know? Well, and just like anything else I suggest, I just want to get your guys' take on it. Cause yeah. it seems to be so much better than, <laughs> than, than what I see on vice TV. <laughs> now CK, what about you, man? I know you're into wrestling. Uh, what was it about this one you wanted to talk about and get into it? What, when Bruiser Brody wrestled, that was when I was like hardcore wrestling fan. Um, and Bruiser Brody, like Justin said, scared the shit out of people, and I thought he was fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, cool. the guy, the guy swinging the chain of the fucking boot with the fur, and he just didn't give a fuck. And he, just, he just, he was, he was, he was hardcore before hardcore wrestling was was even thought of. Right, nice right. hell yeah. You know, dude. am I, you know, so. I always liked watching him wrestle. I thought he was fucking hilarious. I, I loved it. Nice. Man, you know, I, then when I heard about the, the murder and I kind of followed it through the wrestling magazines the best you could at the time. Right. And, um, you know, I got into it that way too. And, and later on I found out all the in-depth stuff on it and just how fucked up it is. But Yeah, it's a, it's a, it is a very fucked up story. Now, just to get us in the fucking mood, I'm going to play – a clip of Brody's intro that he used for like his arena shows. So like, the way that the way that CK said that, I yeah. thought you might play <clears throat> Apple Bottom <laughs> Jeans. That's right with the boots with the fur. When he said boots with the fur, that's all I'm thinking. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> hell yeah! Dude. First thing I thought of too. So, so no, not that song. This is uh, this is the Brody intro. So check this out. I was kind of expecting a different kind of intro, right. but hey, but that's the immigrant thing. song. Like, yeah, what? <laughs> and a different kind version of, of it. Yeah, know, it's like, a lot kind, faster kind, and heavier though. Yeah. yeah, it kind of fit him though. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's you know. What'd you hey, think of his intro? The dude song, with the crazy that's, hair at six foot eight, swinging a chain, can play whatever fucking <laughs> yeah. song he wants to fucking play, right? I mean, Three hundred yeah. pounds, six yeah. eight. You know, if yeah, it's an yeah. immigrant song, then that then that's fine. So yeah, so. Bruiser Brody was actually born Frank Donald Goodish in 1946 in Uniontown, PA. He played high school football and basketball in Michigan, um, but was billed as a wrestler from Santa Fe, New Mexico. So he must have moved around a lot. I did not spend a lot of time on childhood stuff just because of all the different stuff to talk about. I figured we'd spend more time on like the, the wrestling chaos. and the, and the a, murder. A lot, a lot of wrestlers, when they said where they're from, that's they never were really. From oh, there. okay. It was just something. A thing that that the promoter or the booker came. Okay, with, you know. that makes sense to fit their character. I could see that. Um, so growing up, he was all about playing football. Though six eight, like we said, three hundred pounds. No wonder 
You know, he was playing tight end. Must have been like Gronk before there was Gronk. Dude, right? yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker out there. And then playing tackle on defense. So he's playing Iron Man fucking like Iron both Man, sides yeah, of the football. Up Iron Man football. Like, and a oh, total animal. Oh, you just got off from defense. Guess what? Now you're going offense. Oh, you just got off <laughs> offense. You're, you're you are just this stay team. out there. You are this team, boy. <laughs> he was very good at catching passes for a bigger guy, um, and he must have been really amazing. Um, he went on to play football in college, but ended up at West Texas A and M University. So it was kind of a bad boy school, is what I read. Uh, he played with Mercury Morris, and he had his share of drama um himself went on of course to play for the dolphins i always hate that when they fucking whenever it's the fucking anniversary of the fucking undefeated season yeah. of the dolphins that fucking asshole is on tv <laughs> and he's such a dick about it like i'm not a dolphin fan but i just can't fucking stand mercury morris so did, it's funny didn't he serve time for he for did drug, for drugs it was like- a drug some sort two of drug months, effect. Or some shit Something like, like that. Yeah. yeah. So so he's had his share of trouble. So it sounds like West Texas A and M was a was a school where they went when they had a lot of disciplinary. That's probably where issues. I would have went if I played football. Probably. Probably. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking about it like if I played football, I'd have probably got in trouble then too. <laughs> <laughs> so he was school. He was drafted by the Washington Redskins in nineteen seventy one and he made it to their practice squad for one season before deciding to give wrestling a try. He did get his degree in journalism, though. He Did, did he yeah, actually he get his degree? He got it from Texas it. State University, though, so I don't know his nomadic ways. Right. Apparently, he moved again. But, yeah, he did get his degree. I was okay, like, that's cool. I, I didn't realize that. And I, he was uh, – the thing, the thing with him, he was a very, very smart oh, yeah. businessman. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. He, he had a, a high smart, IQ. He was, he was a smart guy, so he knew – you know his stuff, and he knew how to take care of himself. And he knew what he had to do to make money. So I mean, I he guess was the a smart, smart businessman. The journalism degree, I guess, makes sense since he went into sportscasting for a moment too. Mm-hmm. Like you probably needed that, especially back then down there. Right, right. Um, he got uh, into uh, you know uh, wrestling at that time. Um, he you know made it to the practice squad, but that wasn't really going to go anywhere. He just was there for a year. Got into wrestling. He gets married in 1968, divorced two years later. He marries again in 1972 to wife Barbara, and then she was with him until he passed and it was killed in 1988. So, Chris, it's 6'8 and 300 pounds. It's a no wonder this motherfucker was built for football and wrestling, that's for sure. Like I said, I wouldn't uh, want to see that motherfucker coming at me, whipping a chain, <laughs> like, at all, like... <laughs> If uh, he uh, slapped my brother across the face, I'd probably go after him. I'm going to die, too. But, <laughs> but it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I couldn't imagine going up against this dude. I mean, just crazy, you know, strong and, and just built for this. Um, and so pretty, pretty amazing shit. Now, he gets a job, as Joey mentioned, in sports reporting. But I saw that he struggled with typing with those giant sausage fingers. I'm wondering, Justin, how many typewriters do you think he threw across the fucking room? Motherfucker, you know. <laughs> he probably three had a pallet of them there. You know, All the little typewriter things are stuck up yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was old school, not like a, a fucking computer, that's for sure. Um, but this is when he learned how to wrestle under the guidance of Fritz von Erich, a former wrestler and founder of World Class Championship Wrestling in Texas. His first match I uh, saw was in Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, Goodish went by a few different names when he wrestled. Of course, we know him as Bruiser Brody, but also King Kong Brody, the Mass Marauder, and Red River Jack. Uh, wrestled, I like that name, Red River Jack. I like that one, too. Yeah. I mean, that, that name That's is awesome cool to me. Him. <laughs> uh, he wrestled for a variety of companies as a freelancer. And since I don't follow wrestling, I, wrestling, I get a little confused. Tons of fucking acronyms. I'm like, holy shit, my head yeah. was spinning. All Justin, the, all how does that all work? I mean, I don't understand it, but is there like a you know amateur and then you, you move up the ranks? Or are they all... Like their own entities. I don't well, quite understand it. Back in the day, it was territory. So certain okay. people owned certain territories. And like Puerto Rico was huge. Like that's yeah. where all there was 
that was like their NFL. The you know? Oh, no shit. Yeah, like so that, everybody dude. was into wrestling Hell down yeah. there. And they had their own territory. And, and Japan as well. Yeah, Japan as well. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I saw some Japan stuff still Japan. to this day is big in the wrestling. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. So they're all territorial then. So like if you were in the Southwest and you were wrestling for a company out of the Southwest, they would have their own hierarchy yeah. within that organization. But the, well, they weren't playing or wrestling each other or no? Some, well, the, 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 way, the way it was back then was you, you did have territories, but you had three governing um, associations. Northeast, you had WWWF, which goes dub, became WWF and eventually WWE. Right. And that was pretty much, you know, Connecticut, um, New Jersey, New York, the Northeast. So they covered that. AWA, which was an American Wrestling Association, which was um, Nick Bockwinkle, a wrestler, or not Nick Bockwinkle, um, Vern Gagne was the yeah. one who, who um, owned that territory. And that was basically where you guys are. The Midwest, um, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, around right. that area. Okay. They were they were pretty much, you know, that was their territory. Um, NWA, which pretty much had the most, which which was a governing agency that had a bunch of territories. Like they had world class championship wrestling, which is Texas. That was the territory. Mid South wrestling, Florida championship wrestling, Georgia championship wrestling. Um, Mid Atlantic wrestling, um, Southwest wrestling. They had a bunch of territories, and that was governed by the NWA, which is the oldest out of all of them. Okay. So back, so back then, you know, you had different promoters in different territories, and and it, you didn't infringe on other territories. It was a no no. Okay. Gang activity. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I don't know shit about it. CK, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't NWA, didn't they have the traveling belt, though, where they could go from the territories? Yeah, because with, because they're so vast. They had um, they had one champion, but they could go from, from um, usually they went from Florida, Florida Championship Wrestling to Georgia. To so Mid-South. within their, within right. their yeah, region. They, yeah. A lot of times they jumped all over until, you know, late 80s where the NWA basically become World Championship Wrestling, and it was only World Championship Wrestling and, and WWF, and that was it. Okay. No. And and these days you do have you you do have a bunch of independents, but it's nothing like it is what it was what it was back then. Okay. You know. Now, from what I saw and read, it sounds like Brody didn't get well uh, get along very well with uh, the other, you know, some of the other wrestlers who didn't like the way he did what he did, because he didn't want to lose, um, and no, they I called it die. jobbing, uh, in or a job in wrestling where you make, you know, obviously you sell it yeah. like you know you lose, and then but it's all played out, but, but it's yeah. all played out, and then to make it look like you're hurt. Uh, they call that selling it, you know. So, and he didn't want to sell to somebody that was smaller than him because he's like, "Well, this is guy isn't gonna fuck." But hurt he's me. bigger than everybody, right? Know? Well, that's just <laughs> it. So, there's some friction there, and and so I could see where you know, like you got the early brewing of animosity. You know what I mean? Little if, little disagreements with certain wrestlers, but I think overall, from what I had watched and read. He seemed very well liked uh, as a person, uh, like you said. A, he was a smart guy, personality, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. And so, uh, but I could see certain wrestlers had gripes with him because of the way he was. Well, yeah, because he was if, straight up get into the ring and like intentionally hurt somebody so he didn't lose. Like, I mean, that happens, so. right? Re- wrestler said, "If if he liked you, then he liked you. If he didn't like you, then you were in trouble." Yeah. Now, CK with wrestling, I mean, obviously somebody's calling the shots on who's winning and losing. Um, but, you know, what happens when a guy like Brody's going rogue? I mean, he's not even fucking listening. I mean, that's got to be all sorts of problems, I would think. Most most people, if they did that, you know, they would hurt their pushes for, like, for titles and championships and world championships. Right. Um, you know, because most, the majority of wrestling back then is... The wrestlers kissed the promoter's ass. They they were yes men. Brody was was not. He was a nonconformist. Um, if he didn't want to sell, he wasn't going to sell. I mean, if you look, you could go on YouTube and look at matches where 
he's he's supposed to be selling punches and he's just sitting standing there <laughs> taking just taking them like and justin's the, over here smiling yeah. laughing laughing like, 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 like oh yeah those videos those are funny <laughs> well like a big and it's a big fuck you to the promoter but brody was such a draw that it didn't matter no matter where he went you know he was able to you know he had the status to where he could draw people in because people wanted to see the crazy fuck. Well, right. sure. Like, yeah. And you he's know? got these rivalries going on with wrestlers like Kamala, Abdullah the Butcher, Crusher, Larry Blackwell, um, and, and, and others. But in 1974, he challenges Bruno Sammartino from Vince McMahon's, as you mentioned, CKWWWF, I was reading that. I'm like, wait a minute, that's a typo. Dude, I was too, looking at too many W's like a, there. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> so it was original called Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Yeah, this is that Vince yeah. McMahon's dad? Yes. Like today's Vince McMahon. Yeah. yeah. His dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but he lost the championship, and it was in the oh, WWF shit. that Brody wrestled Invader One, who we know of as Jose Gonzalez, uh, who he would run into ten or years later in the locker room. Uh, Brody had beat him up bad in the match, and that's when Gonzalez was like an up-and-comer. So he held a grudge against Brody for making him look bad and beating his ass. Vince, and I Vince could McMahon's see. Vince father, Vince Sr., wanted Brody to sell um, parts of the match because Gonzalez was, like you said, an up-and-coming. He was the next um, Puerto Rican wrestler that w that was supposed to be big. Right. They they were gonna they were gonna push him, and basically, Gonzalez, that match kind of fucked it up for him. Yeah, and he said he, he, there's a witness that says he said right after that that I'm gonna kill that guy someday. So yeah, SD SD Jones. That's pretty fucked up. He supposedly told that to SD Jones. Yeah. Now, Chris, it sounds like Jose Gonzalez has some serious issues with Brody going back yeah, into the 70s. So. I mean, and just that alone, you know, he made him look really bad, fucked up his career. I and mean, he said, yeah, I'm going to kill him. You know? <laughs> fucking, I, I mean, I could totally see somebody doing that. You fucked up my well, whole yeah. fucking life, fucking. Yeah. Just because you wanted to, so you didn't look bad, right. basically. Yeah. Well, so well, I the, could see some thing was, hatred hanging on. Oh, yeah. See, well, Brody rode this guy from then until he got stabbed. He would embarrass him in the locker room whenever he could. Ah. Uh, whenever they were together, you know, he would he would embarrass um, Gonzalez or, you know, uh, make him look bad in front of, the, quote, the boys. Huh. And, um, you know, that kind of was ongoing it wasn't just that one time it okay was ongoing i didn't time. realize that that yeah. makes more what sense were you gonna say just yeah, that's yeah. exactly what i was gonna say that's but but from bruiser brody's point of view when you're fighting people like kamala and abdul the butcher and you're right. getting forks shoved in your face and then you gotta go <laughs> fight this guy with a mask on that's tiny it's like, right I, give me a break yeah, right i, I just, can beat just, the shit yeah. out of dudes <laughs> twice that time right, right like this guy's not gonna hurt right. you <laughs> like, so, right, exactly so like, in 1985 brody spends a short time wrestling with the new japan pro wrestling um he had many disqualifications and issues with different wrestlers there, so it's kind of following him, and he was fired. Uh, he was getting a reputation for a guy that who was incredibly smart. He had an IQ of 138, and just to put that in perspective, Shit, that's Einstein is, mine. Einstein's was 160, <laughs> so that's impressive. Um, but someone who didn't like to play by the rules, so like you guys are saying, you know, he was definitely an outlier. He was a he was a rebel. Um, okay, and he was, he was tough and brutal at a time a when fucking giant, wrestling dude. was fucking barbaric. Yeah, he's like, a huge fucking dude. Like, if you've ever seen Game dude. of Thrones, the mountain. <laughs> and you gotta figure, in Japan, they're looking at him as super disrespectful and dishonorable oh, yeah. to oh, what yeah. they're trying to do. Oh, sure. And you're talking fucking, blood. Yeah. I mean, I watch some of that shit on YouTube, and I'm like, holy yeah. shit. I mean, today well, they'd Brody, be freaking the fuck they, out, you know? Constantly Brody would take aspirin yeah. before the match just to thin his blood. <laughs> yeah, I saw that about the aspirin, yeah. Because um, he was like one of the original deathmatch yeah, dudes, right? Yeah, well, yeah. he's one of the first ones, you know, that hardcore matches. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So people, him, him, him and the Kamal matches, they were pretty much the first hardcore matches that 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 you probably saw in wrestling. Yeah. 
Uh, they were they were fucking brutal matches. Bring the blood. Yeah, at Duel of the Butcher, that was definitely like yeah, one that I watched a lot. Bloody yeah. motherfucker, man. Yeah. Holy shit. Now, the wrestling at Puerto Rico, CK, very popular at the time, but some fucking intense shit. I mean, can you give us a just a quick thumbnail sketch? I mean, how brutal and violent are we talking about? It was bloody. They, the fucking Puerto Ricans, they loved the blood. That's what they paid to see, and they knew whenever Brody came that they were going to see, you know, a brutal match, whoever he fought, and somebody was going to bleed. Right. You know, that, that's... Whether it be him what, or the opponent, somebody's bleeding. Right. Yeah, that, and they what, loved him in the Puerto World Rico. Wrestling Council, that's, yeah. that's what they were known for back then. Yeah. You know, before e, before ECW exploded, and that was, you know, hardcore. Yeah, I remember back Adam then, talking that, about that when we did the Benoit episode. He talked about that ECW was really crazy yeah. with the chairs. Yeah, and, yeah that was. Did you watch a lot of ECW? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was I, like I, when I, used, I was falling in and out of it. But, yeah, anytime I could catch some ECW, you knew I, you were I love some ECW. <laughs> craziness. I, I actually went to the ECW arena in Philadelphia, a little fucking dive. Oh, that would have been cool. Nice. That was... um. Used to be a bingo hall, but it was a fucking dive. <laughs> <laughs> he used to call it the ECW Arena. But. Nice. Hey man, I like dives. That's where I go. I'm white trash. <laughs> 1987, Brody starts wrestling in Puerto Rico. He continues his feud with Abdullah the Butcher and also Carlos Colon. Colon. Um, <laughs> he would fight in uh, uh, the infamous cage match with Lex Luger in 1987. And in the middle of the match, like you guys were talking about, he just kind of stops because he doesn't want to sell it. And they're like, what the fuck is he doing? You know, just literally just stands there and, and just he stops. He fucking hated Luger. So he, he fucking hated him. They, they didn't like when he did that shit and obviously confused Luger. He asked him, you know, if there was some issue he had about it. And he just, yeah, it was just He's like, uh, fuck in you. In real life, I would stomp you. Why do I want to? No, Lex pretend? Luger was a big dude. Well, he was. He was. <laughs> he might have been able to put up with him a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But later, I saw in a book Lex about Luger wrestling, it was noted yeah. that Brody claimed he was tired of Luger, and he didn't want to sell for him. So, in another article written about the same incident, some speculated that Brody was pissed about his paychecks at the time. So, what's your thoughts on that, you know? Justin? Well, I, I think that's exactly right. You know, and the fact that he just. Didn't want, he had that issue with Lex Luger, so he's just right. like, you know what? Watch this. <laughs> yeah, know? like I'll fucking not even give a fuck about nobody now. It ain't just about him. It's like, <laughs> but it did seem like he was getting screwed around by the promotions. And, yeah. Well, if yeah, he's yeah. not playing by their rules, you could see it. Now, Joey seems like a lot of drama going on behind the scenes. You could definitely see where shit is bubbling. Yeah. I mean, there's there's some something going on right. here. A lot of people are fucking mad. I feel There's like, money uh, involved. That makes it worse. It's hard to tell, but from from my outside uh, view, it seems like with Bruce Brody, because you hear everything from his wife stayed with him until he died. You know, yeah. Like, everybody that was in like his personal life always said how nice of a guy he was, right. stand up and all that. Right. So it it feels like to me that like his whole wrestling persona, while he was doing the wrestling, when he was talking to the wrestlers, he was in that Bruiser Brody state of mind. Like no matter he, what, right during the wrestling moment, so he's at home with the wife, family and everything. And so yeah. I'm sure he created a his lot. His wife of said that um, right. she would bring him to the airport. And once he got out of the car, he would take the um, thing out of his hair and let his hair flow. And that's when he got into the Bruiser Brody character. Right. And yeah. he carried the chain around his neck, even in restaurants and everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. In that he, was, yeah, he, he wanted to be Bruiser it was, it, Brody if that anybody was called, huh, showed up. No shit. It was called key fob back, day, back in those days where you didn't, you didn't let, let people know that wrestling was fake. He kept in character no matter right. what. Yeah. Right. So, Justin, it sounds like Brody's having a lot of issues, and the way things are being handled, you know, he didn't get his due. I mean, would you agree? Seems like they're kind of, like, not giving him maybe what he might have felt like he deserved at his talent. His stature and everything, yeah. Yeah, I feel like his, pay, pay, uh, his payoffs are always different, and he wasn't for sure what he was getting paid here or there. So right. I feel like that's why he went down to Puerto Rico, because that's where everybody... That's where the money was. Money, That's right. where he was going to make tons of money. Yeah, and, and that, that makes sense. And they, if it's he had huge like fans down there, so yeah. obviously that's where you make your money, dub. But still, and I and I heard the number, and I should have wrote it down. But he was making like 
a pretty good amount of money each week for just out of Puerto Rico for the eighties. He yeah. was making like thirty grand. He was or he was like the oh, highest wow. paid at yeah. one point. Which, yeah. Wow. Which which was ridiculous back then. Wrestlers didn't make that type of money. Right. Not until like like you know Hulk Hogan in the WWF. Not, not right. Well, not until all you got to think so, that uh, yeah. him coming up when he did and making that kind of money, being on top, you know, and then right. all of a sudden the boom of the eighties, and then you got right. the Hulk Hogan's, and yeah, he's probably like. Holy shit, that's where I should be. But man, these other dudes are just that's they're, the new shit. Yeah, you know, they're right? younger kids. That's gotta and be shit. hard to yeah. deal with. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, sure. I mean, Chris, it sounds like there's just a lot going on here, like we said, percolating beneath the surface. And we see this with the other killers we talk about on here where their lives are in turmoil and it's like that drip, drip, drip until finally snap fucking happens, you know, and they just fucking go crazy. Yes, a lot. Everything so, is built up. And you I'm can see this, this going far on. away. Yeah, for From sure. Murder. And, not and really. You always <laughs> have, but, <laughs> head injuries are always probable with these cases. Too. Oh, sure. Yeah, and, like, like, and that was and the Benoit thing. thing. Yeah. We talked Benoit about that. And the football, Hernandez. Fucking, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that repetitive head injury thing. All that, all, and any serial killer, pretty much, we've talked about. Like, a Lucas, lot of them. Like all of them. A like, lot of them. Injury, yeah. Head injury, head injury. Um, now, when it comes to the murder of Bruiser Brody, I think it's important to point out how with any story, there's several different ways to look at it. I think it seems pretty obvious how this one went down, um, but you do need to hear other sides. I thought it was important to point that out. Um, also, don't want some crazy wrestling fan or <laughs> some fucking hitman from Puerto Rico coming right. here to Hayworth. <laughs> We've on, already dude. had that happen in a way with uh, a that mobster that we did on the podcast, that was rough. <laughs> uh, Tony uh, Car- or Tommy Karate. That that was a little scary. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun, kind of. <laughs> except I, I, I little one except one of his buddies mom. is over there in Danbury, so I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shit, shut up. <laughs> now, CK, I heard that Brody was in Puerto Rico for a week doing various press events. He's riding around in the same car with Gonzalez, but you're saying he, like, you know, punked him out all the time, so that had to be – maybe that helped – bring this to a head as they were together for a week leading up to this. You never yeah, knew that, who your that, friends are. That was part of it. Um, a lot of it was egged on from Carlos Colon, who owned the World Wrestling Council, along with the other owner. I forget the other owner's name, Victor something. Um, supposedly, Brody was going to buy in, and they told Gonzalez, because he was the main booker and promoter, that you know Brody does not respect you. You got to get his respect one way or the other. You have to get his respect. And that's coming out of other wrestlers who were around at that time, um, especially Savio Vega, and a couple other wrestlers have said that that um, he was egged on by Carlos Colon about getting respect. Huh. Okay. And, and I guess you know he took it one way and maybe he thought that's how he was going to get his respect. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, it's fucked up. Now, I mean, it's it's hard to know, obviously, the truth, but you could see some of this stuff seems obvious. Justin, is it true that the Puerto Rican or, you know, Puerto Rico, they owed him some money? I heard that that was part of it. He was supposed to collect some money at, at, at while he was down there for something. Which I heard was like 40 grand. That's what I That's heard, 40 grand. Money. Yeah, and I heard it was for his part I- of the... His buy-in. I heard it was right. like twenty-five. But twenty-five. I don't know the exact yeah, story I, on that, but I that's but that's still got to be some good still money. Part for of the story. For, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's that. I think that plays into it. You know, they're yeah. owed. They owe him money. You know, he's being a fucking ass to this dude. And it like, was Carlos that owed him money. Oh, it was Carlos? Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so. It's July 18th, 1988. They're in Bayamon, Puerto Rico, which is right near San Juan. Uh, it's a hotbed, as we said, for wrestling at the time. And in July, I'm sure it would be hot Yeah. Um, in Puerto Rico. Brody showed up to the venue where he's supposed to have a match with Dan Spivey. Uh, Tony Atlas was there. Um, he was popular at the time who had passed issues with Brody himself, I, I had read. Um, if you watch that Dark Side of the Ring in the episode on Brody, he goes into detail, Tony Atlas does, about what that was like in the in the locker room. I don't know. Did you guys watch that? That I was very I'm cool. Sure. Oh, Justin, yeah. you've yeah. seen yeah. it? Yeah. I watched it twice. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> very interesting to hear him tell that story because it's pretty... 
pretty crazy. Um, he talks about Brody coming into the locker room with a gym bag in his hand. Um, when Jose Gonzalez asked him to step into the shower, he had some business. Uh, Gonzalez was also good. in Vader one. Well, they're in a locker room, so I guess you know, like you have to find somewhere yeah. to go talk. That's so, their office. Not totally. Well, he totally. He most to, likely thought he was going to talk about the match and, him and for the night, yeah, or maybe getting him paid well, or something too. I don't know. Maybe paid and, and talking about you know what was who's coming gonna up, win, who was going to lose, and right how to end the match and all that. That's what he probably thought they were going to talk about. Probably, um, you know, and. Uh, Invader One was also booking uh, wrestling events. I had read in Puerto Rico. Well, well, Invader, Invader One was Jose Gonzalez. Right, right. But that's so, a so, so, yeah. So Gonzalez apparently Tony Atlas said when he came into the locker room that he saw Gonzalez with a few of the other wrestlers kind of huddled together, but then when he walked in, they stopped and kind of broke it up, so you could tell something was going on. He said Brody didn't seem phased by the request to go talk. So, like we said, you know, it didn't seem like it was that Obviously, out of the ordinary. Got along or whatever. A few moments later, Tony said he heard Brody grunt and made a very loud noise. And then the next thing he saw is Brody staggers out of the shower with two nasty stab wounds in his Dude. stomach. He's bleeding all over the place. Jose's got a bloody knife. Like, uh, wasn't it like super bad? Like his entrails were hanging yeah, out? Yeah, he was like holding them in. Yeah, yeah holding yeah. them in and yeah. shit. Like just brutal They, they said the blood was like, the blood was bubbling. bubbling so they, obviously they got his lung. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Like it was they bad. said they were like fucking eight inch bad. cuts or whatever. Oh yeah, for yeah, like, sure. Deep, like, <laughs> like, I don't know how deep they were, but enough to... Could you imagine you're just fucking trying to walk around somewhere oh, holding your guts. fucking intestines yeah. inside yeah. your I body? Mean, that's dude. fucked up. And Tony Atlas said none of the wrestlers helped him either, so he was kind of fucking just taken aback. Uh, Chris, these are fucking nasty stab wounds. They're eight inch fucking deep. I mean, I'm thinking this is a li- obviously a life threatening situation, no, that, oh, no, and nobody's definitely... helping him. You know? Yeah, nobody's helping him at all, dude. But it's fucked up. Could you? What I'm saying. The fact that nobody's helping is fucking bullshit. I thought we were all in this right. together. I'm like, this is a persona. I'm a real right. person. But like, at the same time, you're walking in, holding it in, dude. Like, yeah. That, fuck that, dude. <laughs> now, you, uh, now, Joey, another fucked up part of this story is how it took the ambulance almost an hour to get yeah. there. They claimed it was from the traffic right. and that there was a big crowd there, but I'm wondering, was the fix in? Yeah, I with saw. This whole thing? I saw a second interview or whatever, like a, a, a newer oh. interview, but it was with a different dude, Manny Fernandez, a uh, wrestler who was also there, or whatever. Right. Um, but he was saying that, in his opinion, that if he wasn't in Puerto Rico, he would survive because of the situation with the ambulance taking so long. The fact he went through two operations ended up bleeding right. out of right. the second yeah. one. So he was like, eh, maybe if he had been somewhere where there was better medical assistance, right, this never right. would happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or, but you got to understand, it's also a conspiracy that he was never going to leave the hospital anyway. Yeah, I heard that too. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's hard to yeah, tell. Yeah, he, he and just some, this something about him. that is Tony Atlas, when after he got Brody in, to the hospital and then he came back to the hotel somebody stopped him and yeah. said don't come in the hotel yeah, yeah. they're, they're gonna we'll get, get you up your in stuff your room. for you here's a ticket get the hell out of here yeah. right that's where so, he spent the night on the beach on the and beach, then flew yeah. the next morning got the fuck out of dodge so, you know that's crazy in itself it like, is fucked up you witnessed it now you're gonna die yeah. Was talking yeah about. yeah now ck tony atlas uh, talks about how he had to help the paramedics get brody out of the locker room Uh, Plus, he's trying to talk to the police, but he can't speak Spanish. They can't speak English. So this is like total fucking chaos. And I saw Atlas is talking about tearing shit up, punching holes in walls in the hospital. (laughs) They told him to get the fuck out because he was freaking them out. Uh, Here's the fucked up thing. Because nobody understood English. The person who fucking translated Tony's deposition to the cops. Right. Was was, was his partner, partner. Vader, too. Yes, I did see that. So he was the go-between between between Tony Atlas and the cops. That's fucked up. So the cops are getting his side of the story, and obviously he's going to slant it to help his buddy. And I heard they they were laughing because they thought it was part of the uh, what they were doing. Oh, Oh, sure. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now, Justin, what I read a few different things about these injuries, but what actually was? Did you see anything about what? 
damage that was done with the with the, the two stab wounds? I never saw. I just heard anything you specific. Know, nothing specific. Okay. Just heard it was pretty brutal and his yeah i mean they were out. nasty wounds but one was more life-threatening than the other and like you said joey had to go through a couple of different operations yeah. um he would die from those wounds at the hospital uh he definitely knew something was going down because he told tony tell my wife i love her and that's usually a obviously you know what tell, that tell means sign. And, he, and he was holding a picture of his son all through yeah this. i did that's right i yeah, forgot that about that movie. yeah that was really because he, he wanted that, 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 that. Yeah, that's he wanted Tony shit. Atlas to, to sketch draw him for yeah. him. Yeah, that's right. He did want him yeah. to draw. Um, very sad story. Also very infuriating when you see how the Puerto Rican government appeared to be <laughs> in on the whole thing. After Tony Atlas got back from the hospital, he couldn't believe the other wrestlers just kind of acting like nothing happened. The matches went on as planned. Uh, if you watch those interviews with Tony Atlas and Dutch Mantel, they explain how they had to watch their backs, like you just said, Justin, about, you know... Um, you know, they could not, uh, you know, didn't want him going back up to his room because they were afraid that they were going to take him out. So they give him a fucking ticket and get the hell out of town. Um, and, 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 well, the, right before the matches, Jose Gonzalez goes home, changes. Yeah, right. Comes back like nothing happened. Yeah, that's ridiculous, oh, no man. No big deal, yeah. And, and just, you know, went and talked to the wrestlers like he normally does and yep. they, like nothing happened yeah, yeah when it changed his clothes and went out and wrestled yeah right. it's unfucking yeah. believable now chris it sounds like a crazy situation and it does seem like the fix was in to kill brody no it, it like i had everything going on sounds like definitely that they want to go out to get this guy for whatever reason there could be something that nobody knows about other than the people that went in on this honestly well sure that's but just it the fact that Nobody did anything to help him, like, after they're looking at it happen. It just seems fucked up, man. That's all to me. Like, yeah. fucked up. <laughs> and Tony Atlas said that uh, any of the American wrestlers that were going to testify against Jose Gonzalez got their subpoenas a week after the trial, so they weren't able yeah, to speak. Yeah, I saw that, too. It's like, wait, it's hold on. You weren't up, even come, able David, to come to fucking trial? I mean, Justin, the, the what subpoena. the hell do you think about that? I mean... Well, I think, so... On the whole deal of it being corrupt, I, I believe it was corrupt because he kept saying, Bruiser Brody kept telling Tony Atlas, they are trying to kill me. They right, are trying right. to kill me. So who's, who's they when who's there was they, only one? Yeah. So I don't know if Carlos put Jose up to it or right. you know, some... I, I, th I think it was the three of them because they they said that that, that they, all three of them, Carlo, Carlos Colon, Jose, and Victor, were all in a meeting which they never saw before. Mm. discussing something and they said that was something they never did before so yeah. what, murder somebody you know, <laughs> where, where they just, suppose, suppose this is where where carlos said you got to earn you got to get his respect right so what was anything said other than that you know who knows you'll, I, you'll probably never know right right Definitely a very fucked up situation. Now, what amazes me, CK, is how this motherfucker just goes on and wrestles professionally for years, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it didn't seem to affect him. Yeah, he him. just retired. He, he just got kinda... just retired not too long ago, and he's and and they say he does um he does appearances for schools in Puerto Rico and stuff. Has he <laughs> wow. made it? And, for and, real? and he also got inducted yeah. in the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did I like, did read I, that today. Yeah, that's fine. I up. saw also that in his office he kept a picture of him and Bruiser shaking hands, like, still probably to this day. And they did wow. they did an that's angle on this. fuck out of here, dude. That's couple years up. after. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw that, too, where they did the Damn. angle. He did an angle with, with, well. with some Japanese wrestler where supposedly he got stabbed. The same way that Broody did. Damn. Brody did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> you know, so come on. You know, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. So what do you guys think? I mean, does anybody think that Jose Gonzalez did not kill Brody? I mean, I think that's a pretty uh, I, much a fact. Does anybody I mean, argue yeah, that I point? Yeah, it's a proven fact. <laughs> it's right. a proven yeah. fact. Yeah. They yeah. Just didn't get maybe to go self defense, testify. Or maybe murder. Right. Doesn't, don't know. Well, that that that's what that's what they said was self defense. Self defense. Because right. Right. Exactly. Because because the Puerto Rican people believed wrestling and they so they portrayed Brody as his character. As his yeah. main right. character. That's who he was. Yeah. And look at the size of him compared to Jose. And and you know, and, and a lot of wrestlers said, you know, Brody probably bought this on himself and they, a lot of wrestlers said 
just surprised it didn't happen sooner because he didn't. He was such a nonconformist. Right. You know, he just and, did what he wanted old, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, back in the old days, it was kind of like a mob thing. You know, some of these territories, you didn't fuck with these guys. Right. And the other. So you know. The other thing, like with Carlos, he he denied any knowing anything about it, but yet he was in these meetings and he was there right. when the sh- when they walked into the shower. And yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Something up. Yeah, he's a, he's a piece of shit. And S. D. Jones, as C. Cape correctly pointed out, was the guy that the wrestler that heard him say one day, "I'm going to kill that man." So, you know, <laughs> and if and S. D. Jones was a jobber, by the way. Was he? <laughs> His whole career, he was a jobber. That's funny. Well, somebody's got to do it. Uh, do you think that money was part of the reason? I mean, I don't know. I think it had to have something to do with it, but I think a lot of the dislike of him was so strong and they were so sick of his bullshit, I think they were just, they wanted to be done with him. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think they were in fear of him buying into the territory and then okay. being a runner. Like, exactly. Oh, okay, now oh, I'm going to sure. get all the I money agree. and I'm going to be makes sense. the bigger See, I didn't think of all of us. He's like, yeah. I can buy yeah. it he, all he's, and now I run this Now shit. I run this and I'm bigger than you. He, he <laughs> said he was going to make changes. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Yeah, dude. well, I think, uh, I think that definitely points this in the right direction. Anybody want to add anything, Justin? I, I would like to add one quick thing just yeah. about Ric Flair because he's like all, one of my yeah. all-time favorite people. <laughs> yeah. Right. But he, so he was one of the American wrestlers there. When they question him about this, every time they do, he's like, uh, I didn't see anything. I was preparing for my match. But he was technically right there. But that's how he got to keep wrestling down in Puerto Rico. Oh, because, because he didn't say anything he, about. He lives that street life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. A lot, of, a, lot guys, a lot of these guys didn't want, didn't want to cross, you know, the. Well, yeah, the I mean, they're, they're stabbing they're people in the shower that are six, eight, Jesus 300 pounds, fuck, so yeah. they're going to do know, that to anybody and not give a fuck, you know? I mean, And then what we didn't mention was the subpoenas were sitting on a desk for like 10, 10 days. Like 10 or <laughs> yeah. 10 days. Yeah. And, and they, they got them a week later. The yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so it, was, it, it was a conspiracy. I yeah. believe that was I feel purpose. like it's totally a conspiracy, man. Uh, I, I did agree. find one other thing I thought was interesting. Yeah, what's up? When Bruiser Brody first started coming up, he wrestled with the... The Van Eric, the right? Von Eric, Von yeah. Eric, which is like one of the main the big time, originator yeah. families right, of wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that. like four of their kids committed, committed suicide. suicide. Well, one of them, David. Yeah, you want you want to see a sad story? Holy yeah. shit! Mm-hmm. But that David Von Eric, a whole... when he died, so Bruiser was supposedly the guy that found his body, it cleaned up all the, the drugs, mess, yeah. yeah, and fucking. Oh wow! No shit. Yeah, he was he was in really tight with the Von Erichs, you know. That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole other them. podcast. Yeah, that Eric's. could be a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that's a fucking. Yeah, if you guys, if, if you guys go back in the first season of um, Dark Side of the Ring, they do uh, an hour special on on the um, Von Erickson. Oh, okay. And it's, it's a fucking, it's a tragic story, man. There's no other way to put it. It's just. Oh, I'll have to check tragedy. that out. I think this is a very interesting story. I'm I'm glad, Justin, that you suggested it. Yeah. Um, the research that I did, I watched that Vice episode of Dark Side of the Ring that came out in 2019, uh, the episode on Brody. I was able to watch it on Amazon, I think. Um, I believe parts of the episode are on YouTube, or the whole thing, maybe. Pretty much. Uh, there's lots of articles out there, of course, that talk about this. There are some podcasts. There were some I really tried to listen to, and I couldn't. They were so bad. People I'm not trying to toot our own horn. <laughs> they might, but I'll tell you what: we don't have people that sound like they're talking through a fucking tube on the other side of the fucking room. I think I was <laughs> listening to the same Some one. Of that was horrible. Had the ridiculous. The radio oh, cranked all the way up. Yeah, hear it was anything. awful. I mean, my God. So it is a good true crime story, uh, even if you're not into wrestling. I think it's an interesting it's pretty story. Pretty fucked up, man. Yeah. Now, next time, talking about fucked up, Chris, next time we're going to Long Island, New York, uh, to talk about Joel Rifkin. Joey, uh, you suggested this one. Yeah, you, uh, you're going to be able to be here, I hope, dude. Yeah, that, it might be one of the first. I will check it out. I'll know tomorrow. Okay. Oh, but but regardless, so. Joel Rifkin, <laughs> yeah. such a good one. Yeah, so 17 prostitutes. Here, uh, it's amazing his story isn't more known. The, how he I think got, it's one of those like, weird. The laziest enough how he got caught oh yeah like, it's great it's really great <laughs> <laughs> so a disturbing guy he killed quite a few in a short period of time and the way they caught him was hilarious so we're going to do that next week you definitely don't want to miss that 
Well, CK, even though you're already here, I could still hear that intro music because your contract says we've got to play your <laughs> intro music. Yes. So we're going to have to play it. Fuck so your contract. Since Don't you're already here, CK, what the fuck do we need to do, man? We're going to get our fucking metal on, brother. Known the world over as the master of metal, the crusher of posers, and murder metal mayhem's knower of all things metal, hailing from Wild Man Street in Danbury, Connecticut, standing at six feet of brutal punishing madness, weighing in at 220 pounds of poser pulverization. The one, the only, toughest bastard on the planet, Chris C.K. Comics! There he is, riding at 920 in here, Chris. What is up, CK? CK. What's up, back but he's again? Already, he's already been here. Why do you have to get on the train to come back in? I don't know, but <laughs> Cause I got, I, he's got to like, make like his entrance. Re- like a wrestler, I have to make my grand entrance. Yeah. Definitely got to have I that guess, fucking music. I guess, I guess. Well, yeah. Very you know, I good. Gotta have, Got to have the robes flowing, you know, the, the <laughs> blonde hair. You're not swinging a chain around, though. That's that's a good you thing. No, no, I, you got to come out glistening. Think... Spray yourself down glistening, bro. <laughs> no, I don't think I have the fucking strength to lift that fucking chain right now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> CK going through that new chemo medicine. Yeah, how's oh, yeah. the uh, the oh, new yeah. chemo regimen going, CK? Um, I'm on my second day. So far, so good. A little tired. Well, actually, I'm really fucking tired, but... Right now, that's the only side effect, so knock on wood. Hey, that's you sound good. good, brother. I was going to say, you do sound you good. Sound I, good. I was good, curious brother. to see tonight what you would sound like, but you sound good. I, I always get pumped when it's time for ah, this. there you go. Fucking right, brother. Oh, yeah. That's right. He'll that's throw right. you horns from a hospital bed. That's right. <laughs> Even with the priest standing there when he says fuck. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. doesn't give a shit. I, I fucking get it. So we got <laughs> CK on talking about Nasty Savage, CK. Why did you pick the band Nasty Savage this week? Good time. Well, a couple of reasons why. They're, the one, they're a kick-ass band. Two, they were on my list. Three, it's a tie-in to wrestling. That's right. So, um... Yeah, I so did not know that. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea, bro. Yeah, well, it, it's <laughs> no a very, shit. it's a very interesting one, and 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 um, we'll get into it a little bit. Um, the 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 wrestling thing is probably more more exciting than than the band's history as far as <laughs> <laughs> because um, there's I mean as far as as far as Nasty Savage they formed like an eighty, I want to say. Like eighty two, eighty three, all right. And Brandon, Florida, and everybody knows for what Brandon, Florida is famous for now. Fucking every Florida death metal band there ever was is pretty much out of Brandon, Florida. Was right. that where Morris I thought was? By Tampa, though, right? Tampa, Brandon. Yeah, I thought you were going to say COVID nineteen. It's all Florida's fault. Yeah. Fucking cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Nasty Savage was definitely down there during the big explosion of uh, American death metal down there. Definitely, dude. Yeah. Um, they formed like in 82, 83. They were primarily a thrash, a thrash metal band for the most part. They released a demo called Wage of Mayhem in 84, and that caught the eye of who else but Metal Blade Records. <laughs> Gee. Always Metal fucking there, Blade, dude. There's a shocker. Metal Blade Records signed somebody in, in the early 80s. How about that? I don't know. That's probably, that's probably why CCK is still wearing that dirty-ass <laughs> shirt he's been wearing this whole time. <laughs> trying, to, tr- trying to get these guys to give us some love is like, you know, pulling teeth. Yeah, Hell it yeah. is. <laughs> But um, we still we still love the label. It's an awesome label. Um, but they formed in, in 82, 83, released a demo. Uh, Nasty Savage signed to Metal Blade. They released a self-titled album in 85. Um, pretty much a straightforward thrash album um, with Ronnie, or Nasty Ronnie, but his real name is Ronnie Galetti. Um, with a, he's got a very... He's got a great voice, but it's it's a voice you have to be accustomed to. It's one of those bands. 
Yeah, um, I understand that because King Diamond's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Bite your tongue, <laughs> goddammit. You know, if I, if I was there, I would hold you and not have Pete kick you in the nuts. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I believe you would. <laughs> <laughs> but love you, brother. I love you too, man. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they formed, um, they quickly put out a second album, Dolgence, and uh, two uh, two years later in '87, and somehow, because Ryan, Ryan Nessie Ryan was doing the stage stuff with throwing TVs on his head, um, smashing TVs on his body. Um, he was very influenced by by Wendy o. Williams from Plasmatics. Yeah, um, that that chick's so, fucking crazy. She dude. is fucking crazy. God damn, was, bro. Was. Well, well, you know what I mean, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what I mean. But, um, but yeah, holy shit, you know, dude. Yeah, he was influenced by that stuff. And, and he was also, I guess, when he was younger, he was a wrestling fan. And somehow, Kevin Sullivan, who at the time was um, a wrestler, a booker for Florida Championship Wrestling, um, heard of him, somehow got in contact with him. And... Um, became friends from at that time Kevin Sullivan had this um this gimmick where he was um a Satanist and and he, and he at what the time my was, gimmick bro that's what I do every day hell <laughs> Satan <laughs> well back then in wrestling you didn't have that shit and, yeah, and it was right, kind of like, right. it was no. kind of cr- you know I think I saw and, um, clips of that it is fucking creepy like looking pretty taboo for wrestling he, um, yeah I would think at that time, he was a wrestler, but he was more of more managing. And he managed his, um, I think what they were called, the Army of Darkness or something, or, or something yeah. like that. That's what his stable was called, and it included uh, Maniac Mark Lewin, the Purple Haze, who acted like he was fucking space shot and in and, and another world. <laughs> um, these two chicks, Luna Vachon and, and, and The Lock, they were a tag team wrestling, or two um, women wrestlers. Luna Vachon was it was a nut job too. She was crazy. Um, and they had a valet, whose name was Fallen Angel, who um, was Nancy Sullivan, and who later became Nancy Benoit. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, that I remember that. Oh, we did that story. Shit, yeah, yeah. So so there was a tie into that, and um, Nancy Ronnie got involved with the wrestling part of it, and actually. They cross promoted both ways. You know, he used the wrestling to promote the band, and um, they used Florida Championship Wrestling used him to promote wrestling. So it was kind of like at the time it was kind of like a a, a good deal, right? Because I mean, in the WWF you had the Hulk and wrestling rock wrestling connection, which was kind of kind of you know corny. Right. But, but at the time I mean, when I was young, it was, it, was, it was cool. But this was much better. Um, and eventually, Nasty Ronnie became, you know, became a manager himself and actually got involved in wrestling. So did he wrestle uh, as Nasty Ronnie then? He didn't. Re- he didn't really wrestle. He was more involved in, in the managerial part of it. Oh, okay. okay. Um, that that was that was his thing, and he actually still does it to this day. I think in, in some independent. Pl- I think it's in, independent wrestling. Or the Independent Wrestling Federation in Florida, or something like that. Huh. I don't. I don't know if he still does it, but um, they released that second album and, and they released the single Triple X, which um, Luna Vachon and The Lock actually sang backup vocals for, and that album is just a killer album. And um, that's the album that really got me into them, because the first album was kind of like a, it was kind of like a generic thrash album, but Indulgence took it to the next level. They were, it was just a great album. And um, shortly after that, they put out the Abstract Reality EP, which is like four songs, I believe. And um, that was their deal with... that. They were done with their deal with um, Metal Blade. That was it. They were done. Um, you get to 1989, he signed with Rotten Records, um, who Rotten Records had signed... Rotten Records um, had a lot of badass bands back in the acid day. Acid Bath. Yeah. Um, DRI. But um, they came out with an a awesome album called Penetration Point. And, and and as always with other bands... Stop talking about that, my mom, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty Savage had like multiple fucking 
members. And Nasty Ronnie pretty much the only stable one. Then they broke up after that. Um, one of those things where they just broke up. And as far as I know, Nasty Ronnie concentrated a little bit more on the wrestling aspect of um, of things. And eventually Not so much music began. anymore. I, I guess he I guess he was still a volume musical but but wrestling was pretty much what he was making money. Right. At so the time. Can, not that not that, not that he was a make, sellout just like, hey yeah, no, this is my, no, because he wasn't making much. I mean Right. You you work in independence, you don't make that much money. Um and in two thousand three they um released the Wage of Mayhem E P which was their demo. And finally, in 2004, they released a new album, Psycho Psycho. Um, and again, after that, it's been pretty much they've broken up, they've gotten together, they've broken up, they've gotten together. Um, supposedly, um, they've recorded stuff or they're recording stuff. Um, he said in 2016 that they were planning on recording a new, a new album that was due by that summer. Um, as of November, as of 2019 last year there was still nothing released and right no, nothing, nothing said about coming out or, right 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 now there's nothing coming out but i read an interview where he said they are recording hmm. um i think you give out a little teaser in these days and age though well maybe he did what, what we did with the um with the bonus episode maybe they deleted shit that's very possible. <laughs> yeah, I was, oh, you're I was actually about, producing yeah, the session and I deleted it by mistake. <laughs> Sorry, no, I mean, Nancy. That, <laughs> anyway, that shit happened. That shit used to happen all the time, and and with bands. Oh sure. Shit yeah. getting deleted. You sure. Know? But um, as of, as of right now, they only have the um, the four albums, and all of them are great albums. And I, I think they are available for streaming. Um, physical copies are kind of hard to come by. Unless you go on eBay and pay a couple extra bucks for it, but um, definitely check out Nasty Savage. Um, they're a brutal band. Nasty Ronnie has a great voice. Like I said, it's something you have to get accustomed to, kind of like King Diamond. Um, Did you ever like, say I'm live? Shot, give, give, Did you say what I'm was li- that, Joe? Did you say I'm live before? I've never seen him live. I got luck. I saw him at a Milwaukee Metal Fest 2003 or 2004, and, you know, they did the TV thing and all that. Oh, cool. I wasn't really big into them growing up, I think, because like you said, his voice, you got to get used to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, But after seeing them live, like, I gained a huge respect for him and ended up becoming a fan after that. I've said this before, talking about metal shit, like, like, if I see a band live that's what makes it for me because I can listen to your album all day long and it sounds badass but if I see you live and you suck live yeah. that makes a huge yeah. difference oh yeah me. yeah for sure well very cool CK that, um, you got a now? lost classic for us tonight yeah I got a band out of um, it was in the 90s like 93, 94 um, Kilgore Smudge the album was called Blue Collar Solitude. Yeah, I never heard Later of this. I never heard of this. No, this is new. Later on, they were they were just called Kilgore. But um, they they have they put out two albums. Um, Blue Collar Solitude's a really good album. I like it's the name. Kind of, I like the name of that 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 title, Blue Collar Solitude. I love that title. It, it's kind of like a, a little bit of hardcore, kind of like a prong vibe to it. If you like prong, yeah, I love yeah, kind I love of sounds prong. like them. Yeah, it, it's a really good album. And I just I remember in the nineties, it was a used CD that I, or it was a promo CD that somebody had they they gave to me. Cause they, we there used to be a CD um, distribution place in Bethel where we used to live, and a bunch of my friends worked there, and they had a a, a promo that just came out, and he's like, here, take it. And I put it on. I'm like, this is this is badass shit. Nice. Um, is it available? But, um, Can I listen to it I, at least on YouTube? I, th- or something? I, I, I think it. I think I, it's on YouTube. I think. Um, if it's not on YouTube, I, you should probably take your copy and upload it on that motherfucker. <laughs> no, I, I can. Hear I it. don't. Right? <laughs> but, but I think it. I think it is available on YouTube because I was listening to it the other day. I work. think on YouTube. <laughs> well, that's cool. I was, I was surprised. I was surprised Joey didn't know about these no, guys. I, I didn't know that band. I mean, it's a possibility if I heard them, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I remember that," but I don't think so. Yeah, I never heard of him at all. Now, yeah. now, speaking of metal, CK, you're on uh, Facebook Live every Thursday at 3.20 Central Time, 
doing some reviews. You've been yeah. doing some good stuff, man. Yeah. Um, no, I'm getting some. I'm getting some views on it, and uh, people are looking at it. That's awesome. Um, it, it's really fun. I mean, I'm now. Now I'm in the process of doing no, a review on a new CD, and I'm grabbing like a re-release that just came out and giving a quick review on that on some t- on some days. So yeah. I do it. Um, this week I'll, I'll let you know it's going to be a twofer. Okay. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you do it on Thursday, so that's the day the episode comes out, and then I do mine on right. Friday, so yeah. it's a good one-two you know, punch. You know, then we could push the um, the new episode a little and get the word out. And, yeah. Um, you know, and then last week we killed it with Listen, so who knows, maybe that was part of it. Yeah, it's hard to say, man. It's uh, yeah. it's always good to see it, though. Now, the 666 Club, we talk about that all the time, but the benefits are good. Uh, you get a VIP experience of the show. Uh, patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem three bucks a month get uh, some bonus content which we are getting ready to do one here uh, VIP access you get the shows a day early you get uh, merch 10% off uh, Justin you uh, recently you're just a contest winning kind of guy <laughs> but you won a contest where you get 30 days free of the um, 666 club but so far do you like it yeah I'll be uh, purchasing that and uh, as soon as as soon as my cool. month Wait. is up, yeah. if I don't win like, another how one. How long did you have to juggle Pete's balls to get that? <laughs> I just had to answer, <laughs> just, just like to just just answer wanted, questions. Man. Yeah, he just, won a, he just won a contest on Facebook Live, oh, yeah, I think dude. it was. But uh, it's awesome. And um, Justin's one of our, our, our loyal listeners. That's yeah. right. That's right. And we're going to be doing another contest. Uh, we're going to break that out probably next week. We'll we'll start talking about that. So I'm going to keep it close to the different. vest. Hell yeah. But yeah, we're going to do gonna another cool. contest like March Mayhem where you'll get to win uh, the opportunity to be a guest host on the show. So uh, it's going to be fun. And will be another Satan. similar contest but a little different. Yeah. So very cool. Uh, Joey, what's going on with the distro and the label and some shows and yeah, uh, I mean, shit being shut down, it's, you know, very questionable. But I do have some things coming up. Um, I just did play a house party in Keokuk, Iowa. Yeah, how did that yeah, go? That it looked was like awesome. you had a good time. Yeah, some of the Midwest guys got back together. Uh, Jesse was butt chugging, I see. It's funny because uh, <laughs> one of the pictures, he didn't take his pants off. He just rocked it, his ass crack because okay. he's a trucker now. <laughs> oh, He's all about that trucker life. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so he, 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 Easy. And somebody, like, the first thing they commented was, damn, Jesse wears pants? And I was like, sometimes. <laughs> but, and, hey, hey, Joey. What's that? I got a question. Huh. When you do those house shows like that, do the cops ever get called? All the time. Well, I mean, I've, I've been at a couple <laughs> that they have showed up at. I got shut down one time in Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, there's been a couple, but generally, if I'm going to go play a house party, it's going to be somebody who has it, some it, land. They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. those What's are the better on? ones. Because yep. Lowe's like we've it's done just some, up, yeah. we did some parties before, and yeah. sometimes, no, no. yeah, the cops what show up. What were you saying, about Jesse's ass, though? Because uh, we used to get the cops called on, on us just for jamming. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get them out. It we depends we where the show is. Right. And we generally go someplace that's uh, along the edge of a town or in the country right. or something like that. But we uh, we got fucking me and the Mikey Shawback Shaw back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Shaw, yeah, the Shawback sticker was on Jesse's ass. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, Mikey and me were going out to North Carolina uh, the week after the 4th. Yeah. And I was supposed to play a show out there. Of course, it got canceled. Right. But we're going to do a live stream of me and my buddy's band, Vituperate, out there. Oh, cool. And the drummer actually hit me up, and he was like, hey, give me a couple of your songs. I want to learn them so we could, with a real drummer, you know, oh, and jam cool. them. Yeah, so, that's oh, going to be awesome. awesome. Yeah, so that's, that's going to be pretty cool to look dude. into. Yeah. Uh, and then the weekend after that, I'm actually going to South Dakota and playing South Dakota Slam Fest with uh, okay. Abolishment of Flesh from I'm Texas. I'm riding for that one. Uh, but some pretty good bands and... Uh, you know, South Dakota, they're they're open right now, right? And it's actually at a bar, so this will be very interesting. Yeah, for so. sure, very cool. Well, yeah. good to hear you and Gormonger doing some shit. Yep. Um, I did see that FTA is postponed to twenty twenty one, but yep. that's yes, like is. we said. I mean, that's anybody unfortunately what's going has, on. Yeah, anybody's listening that has tickets already, they're already rolled over. You can use your twenty twenty passes for twenty twenty one. Uh, just hit up Joey B on Facebook 
and check that out. But yeah, it's been postponed to a while. What was the date, Cashman? Do you know offhand? I think it's September seventh and eighth. Something no, like that. Eight, eight, it starts the eighth. It yeah. starts the eighth. Yeah. So that's twenty twenty one though. Yeah, so it's so crazy because yeah. I remember in April whenever I, that was the first time somewhere in April where I first saw somebody say something about oh there won't be any shows until twenty twenty one. I'm sitting there like get the fuck out of here. Right. You know, and and now look at now look at everything. And now that's just for real. So it yeah. is. It like, is. Look at everything. It's already July. Yeah. Yep. So uh, any other uh, metal news or anything that we want to uh, talk about? Uh, no, I did like the new Cro-Mag song that dropped. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I didn't hear it, but I heard that yep. they did drop one. You heard that, CK? Who was that? The new, new Chrome Mag song. I got the I got the CD. Oh, nice. <laughs> he said I got the whole I got the whole motherfucking is, album, boy. Is, is the whole album decent? <laughs> Joe, you gave it away. That's what I'm actually reviewing. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome, though. That's, that's a good cool. Call. Yeah. Yep. Fuck yeah. Yeah, the new CD. Good. Good. Well, and um, and, and we're actually doing um. For the Rifkin episode, that's that's the band we're featuring perfect. is the Chromex. Nice, yeah, perfect tie in yeah. there. G- give that New York um, yeah. connection there. Very cool. Well, we've uh, we've done some good metal education tonight. So Joey, what the hell do we got to do right now, man? Let's get our fucking mayhem on. Want to fight, fight to kill, day and night, night and day. Let the force threaten you. Deadly weapons, metal gear. So this is uh this is Paul and I'm Shaw back drunk as fuck. I say Paul because my brother he goes by fucking Wayne when he gets drunk. We're Shaw back drunk. So let me tell you about the new merchandise we got going on for the Shaw back drunk shit. You might think you're drunk, but you ain't as drunk as me, motherfucker. I'm drunk. I'm Shaw back drunk. Let your friends and family know about what you're doing, and if you really want to get in on it, buy our new merchandise line. Check out our new beanie. It's got a fucking busted beer can on it or some shit. I don't know. Check out a koozie. You fucking keep beer cold. Fuck. I don't even know. Uh, what about those thongs that those ladies like to wear? I mean, I mean, some of them got poop stains, whatever. It doesn't matter. Grandma loves those poop stains. Oh, she loves thongs, too. Have you ever seen your grandmother thong? I have. Uh, we got a Shawback Drunk logo sticker going on right now, so you can do whatever you want to do. Call us today right now at 1-800-SHAWBACK. Get us your fucking goddamn email address, figureshawbackdrunk.com. Go to YouTube and check out Shawback Drunk all day. Shawback Drunk! Mike, why'd you ruin my fucking beer, you asshole? Wow. <laughs> fuck! commercial. How about that? <laughs> Proud moment there, Shawback family. I ain't gonna lie, that's fun. As I'm sitting here drinking this tall boy of uh, Bud Ice. Nice. Hell yeah, white trash, hardcore rock and roll, fuck you. There you go. <laughs> Shawback drunk commercial. Before that, Nasty Savage, a song that Gladiator. Savage Love doing it. those funny commercials. Yeah. We got a few of them to roll out here in the next several weeks, so that was one that I needed to play tonight. So I oh my that God, fun. dude, that was fucking hilarious, dude. We I still have... Yeah. yeah, yeah, you want one of them t-shirts? Huh? We still right, have Joey cool. Gormonger here, yes, Joey. Uh, we got CK still on, and Justin Morris is still here with us. Uh, how's everybody doing? Doing good. Awesome, awesome. Justin, so far you've hung in there just fine. So far, has it been uh, been a fun experience oh, yeah. doing this? Oh, yeah, this is awesome. This cool. is great. Cool, Hell, yeah. Justin, we have a lot of Justin fun. Justin kicked ass. I kicked just want to thank you guys, too. So thank no, you. No, hell yeah, dude. Anytime you want to come in, anytime. Just thank hit you. us up. Be like, hey, you and this guy coming up, I'm coming in. Be like, all right. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we love having people coming in here. Fuck so yeah, we do. Well, we're in Mayhem, guys, and we usually tell some stories here in Mayhem. We've got any, uh, Joey? Oh, Justin, you got anything? I, for I don't, but I promise you this. If, if I get to come back here, I'll have one. Okay. That's okay. Uh, uh, That's I, always, okay. I always like offering the guests first because it's always sure. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't prepared. Obviously, you got to gotta, you gotta like let the guests get in <laughs> first. I'm gonna tell a little quick one that just it's nothing yeah, really bad or nothing, but like I got this black eye while I'm sitting here in the studio. I'm just gonna tell what happened just Friday night. Okay. <laughs> so, you got your ass kicked. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like we were hanging out. I, 
I like there was a bunch of us. We were not a bunch of us, but there's quite a few of us. We're drinking beers or whatever, and my buddy and his cousin, who's also my buddy, but they come over and he's got his BMX bike, twenty inch BMX fucking dirt bike. I'm out there like drunk, no. riding wheelies. So when I come down, dude, I fucking turn the handlebars sideways like all the way so the fucking oh, front no. tire yeah the front <laughs> tire hits the road sideways i flipped all the way over the oh, handlebars man. so like i landed face first so i got this black eye the other like the next day i woke up and it was like swollen and shit and everything dude oh, but wow. like i got my whole left side of my body my knee my shoulder my Damn. elbow my everything dude like jackass Stor- shit. yeah like just some dumb like why did you even attempt That's that funny. Stor- stories Michael, of Michael's over here ta- is funny. Curso. Stor- stories of 40 year olds on, on BMX bikes never come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They yeah, never they, end good. They never end good, bro. No, that's funny. <laughs> they never end good. That's funny. Joey, you got any uh, stories you want to tell? I mean, there's. I mean, you guys want me to tell you the story that's going to send me to hell? Yes, sir. That's oh man! You, I'm no, t- no, because then Michael's gonna try and make me to tell no. the story that's gonna I'll, send me to hell. I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I've been wondering how to tell this, but I'm just gonna tell it. Okay. And, and like, it's pretty rude. It's some mayhem. Okay. I, I, we about if, it. Dude. If I were to believe in hell and heaven, I would think this is what's gonna send me. But anyway, so back in <laughs> back in high school when I'm living Here in Mattoon, we had uh, <laughs> open <laughs> campus it's for lunch. Fucking great, right? It? Okay. You could leave and you go get something to eat, but you couldn't come back into the into the school until the bell rang. Okay. Right. So our lockers are down on one end of the high school, but our class after lunch down on the other. So what we would do is. We sneak in the door, go to our lockers, grab our stuff, and we go dip off into the bathroom. Just hang out there till the bell rang, so we get to class on time. Right. So one, day, it's me and two other guys, and when, I'm bathroom. not the one that did this. This is why I feel like I can tell this story, but <laughs> oh, yeah. but it's either right. Way, it's so we go in this right, bathroom, right. and there's a there's a sink, and it you know it's got the fucking stopper in, and it's fucking full of water. Right. My one buddy fucking walks over and fucking pisses into this fucking sink of water. Right. Right. So we're sitting there, all of a sudden we hear some voices outside, we're like, oh shit, so we dip off into one of the stalls, you know, we're not supposed to be in the, in the school. Dude, it's the fucking teacher with the special ed class, and she walks them in one by one oh, no to way. wash their hands and face <laughs> in the sink. Oh, damn. And it's like, bro, we sat there, and oh my God, we I don't even know what the fuck we could even think for like a couple oh of my God. Like, I ain't trying to get myself in trouble, but that's fucked up. That is fucked up. Dude, and that's why I said, oh, I was like, I'm man. not the guy that actually did that, and it wasn't like it was intentional. I mean, <laughs> Right. Well, holy right. fuck. <laughs> no, that was some bad shit. shit bro. Wow. <laughs> holy shit, man. Damn. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> did I, I don't know, did I ever tell the story about um, the the guy that was fucking with my lunch at school? I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't think I recall think that, 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 dude. I had a, a, my, I think it was, seen, it was either junior or senior year at high school, and I had somebody that kept fucking with my lunch and my locker i didn't put a lock on it because nobody fucked with your shit or at least i didn't have to worry about it so but i had somebody going in and taking the snack out yeah. of my lunch every fucking day <laughs> your fritos yeah i'm like the one thing like my mom used to make my lunch and it was right, like right. the most plain fucking lunch like ever but they you know? take that one thing every the one, one fucking <laughs> like the cupcake or something like, really yeah. Dick, you know. Come on, dude. So I got fucking sick and tired of it. So I thought I'd come up with a little plan. So I took, uh, I had a coffee cake uh, that, you know, that we had like those prepackaged like right. little debbies or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell I yeah. cut it in half, and I took uh, soft soap and put oh, it all over God. the inside oh, of it. Oh, bro! And then I sprinkled fucking pubic hairs all over it. Wait, like your own? Yeah. <laughs> nice. And nice. then I put the two together That's and then awesome. I put it in a Ziploc bag <laughs> in my lunch. So I'm, I'm sitting there at lunch and I'm looking around and I'm like, all right, which one of you motherfuckers took my lunch? And this one dude stands up and he's like, oh, my God. And he holds this fucking coffee cake out. And it's like a string of soap going to his face. He had oh, pubic hairs man. all over his lips. He was freaking the fuck out. Oh, was like puking and 
throwing up that's into the fucking times, garbage yeah, can. Never fuck with my lunch again. No. So. Bet not. No. Yeah. Bet no. I guess not. <laughs> yeah. I never I, ate coffee cake again. I either. don't know if he thought it was like actually like what we did to Michael with right. the Disturbed CD. Word. Or if it was real jizz, but it looked like it the way he held the fucking coffee cake out there and the fucking string. It's all stringy. Yeah, it was shit. fucking yeah, nasty. That's so. Fucking disgusting. so that's my contribution that's to mayhem. So. I, don't, I noticed Michael don't get too far away from that CD, does No, he? he really likes it. He really no, he does. No, he sits right by it every night, dude. Every time I hear dude. Every time he comes over, he's like, the cock. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We are uh, we're in mayhem, and we've got something to do here. we got to kill a cage match to get to, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we do this every uh, week when we do a typical episode. We pick, uh, you know, we get our listeners to pick some random numbers. And I got 70 now, 70 killers, 70 objects. They pick two numbers apiece. And that's how we figure out who's going to fight and then who, what are they going to fight with. So, Chris, we got a couple listeners this week we're thanking for their contributions. Yes, yeah, uh, we got uh, Darlene Dent Christine and Cody Durst. So nice. thank you very fucking much. Very and cool. Once again. And uh, we got yeah. another good one yeah. in store. The uh, the uh, matchup this week, Joey. Who it's do we got? It's a snowball fight. It is. It's a snow <laughs> De- Dennis Nielsen versus the Menendez brothers. It's yeah, so we always fun. pair the Menendez stupid. brothers up because they're total pussies. Yeah, yeah, so. you got to say, you, <laughs> right, you, right. you pick the two biggest pussies you get picking this. Totally. So they've got a couple of objects that should make this interesting. Justin, what's the uh, the objects you're going to be fighting with? Did you see oh, that? No, I thought I was picking them. Numbers. Oh, you are going to pick the numbers, oh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, they got, yeah. Chris, okay. what's the? Are you seeing yeah. Justin? No, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I got lost here. That's all right. So they're no, going to yeah. fight you with two a, objects: a large leather bound Bible and, and a, a fistful, fistful of razor, razor blades. blades. Nice. And then Justin, you need to pick a number between one and fifteen. That's right, Justin. What, will, what's it going to be? Pick number one. Let's start nice. at the beginning. Number one. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right. Good and time, I lost dude. The page Good of my time. Notes, so I came so I up with a new list of fifteen. So this is you a first say up here. Uh, number one is uh, six kittens on PCP. Nice. So <laughs> that's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> And just for fun, I'll, I'll read through the other variables. We got uh, three raccoons with rabies, a 55-gallon drum with uh, sewer, filled with sewer rats, two very hungry Rottweilers, three millennials with man buns and coronavirus, Randy Bobandi after a 12-pack, two crack whores fighting over a $10 bill, an 80-year-old lot lizard in heat, Two Middle Eastern taxi cab drivers so fighting over a dollar tip. <laughs> Richard Simmons with leg warmers on fire. A male, a male yak trying to fuck everyone in the cage. A pissed off midget with a 10 foot long whip. Justin Bieber on fire. Chris, dick. Chris, you're going to like this. Chris, uh, stinky panties dripping something green hanging from the top of the cage. <laughs> And number 15, Joe Biden on crack. So, But, Justin, you picked number one, and that's six kittens on PCP. So, oh, fuck. So we got Dennis Nilsson. Dennis Nilsson. The Menendez brothers, fucking pussies that they are, uh, with a large leather-bound Bible, a fistful, fistful of razor blades, blades, and six kittens on PCP. So what do we think here? Uh, this is going to be okay. interesting, Chris. What do you here think? Was, here's where I'm going. The Menendez brothers, are, at some point, they're going to separate. They're not always together. Dennis Nils is going to trap each one of them, kill them, trap okay. them under his floorboards at his fucking apartment or whatever. Right. Whatever. The uh, cats on PCP, <laughs> they're just like scratching away and eating all the fucking corpses. Okay. So he's got all the both the Menendez brothers trapped down in there. Okay. With, with and then cats take, eating their faces. <laughs> and the Bible means nothing. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> fistful of razor blades, though, could do some razor damage. Blades, Nilsson takes a fistful of razor blades, and he uses them to cut them up into small chunks oh, to put down put his down drainage pipes, bro. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Like, Nilsson wins this shit. 
<laughs> what do you think, Justin? I, I feel like the kittens have this in the bag. Oh, you think so? Nice. I mean, I'm thinking kittens scratching on PCP. That could get yeah, pretty I fucking mean, ugly, well, man. Get your eyeballs and shit. Well, not only that, but you could have a fistful of razor blades, and you know that's not going to help you when you got all these kittens coming at you full of right. balls. I was out. also all thinking crazed. about the fistful of razor blades. Are you squeezing this fistful? Of, <laughs> is your hand you're like impervious to the razor blades. Yeah, you're yeah, not is your hurt. hand all fucked. Up? Okay, okay. They're just your tool. Yeah, they're your weapon. Like Freddy Krueger type shit. Right. Yeah. I'm like fucking pinhead, but razor blade. <laughs> I still feel like the cats will be too fast. Yeah, it's possible. I, Joey, I, what do you think, man? I mean, in my scenario, I feel like Dennis Nielsen's going to get those cats on PCP up the Menendez brothers' assholes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Since the cats are on PCP, they're going to fucking claw their way oh, out of the stomachs. Oh, damn. I'm pretty sure that, oh, that's, that's going to be a lot of Very, screaming. I love the way I, you I give it about. to Dennis Nielsen. Okay. CK, what about you, man? Uh, Dennis Nelson is going to destroy the Menendez brothers. The only thing, the only thing the Bible is going to be good for <laughs> is the Menendez brothers are going to be holding it up, praying that they don't fucking die after <laughs> Nielsen fucking right. takes the razor blades and slices them, um, slices their sh- their arms and all that shit off. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to cut them in bite-sized pieces to flush down yeah, the toilet. So. I got Nelson. You got Nelson. You got the kitties. I'm, I'm like, I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. with the kittens. I'm kind of into that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm thinking that uh, the edge is going to go to Nelson as well. So Fuck I yeah. think this is a good one, though. Very good discussion, yeah, guys. You know what kind of what kind of odds would this be in Vegas? Like, fucking <laughs> four Nelsons, one kitty. Always yeah. fun to uh, do some killer cage match. Somebody so sometimes <laughs> people make failed attempts to copy it, but it is only one. Let me tell you let me tell you a, a tiny other mayhem story real fast. Yeah, Just because ahead, this reminded me of it. Sure. When I was in <laughs> Dallas dude, I hung around with one of my friends and this guy fucking hated homeless people. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And down in Tech Man, they come up to you a lot. And he just didn't have time for that shit. And he would let them know in the door. Oh, damn. But one thing he did a couple times I saw him do that, I mean, just focus, but you would know the spots where they would be begging on, the, like, the intersections and shit, you know? Right, right, right. He would drive. I've seen him do this twice. I'm sure he did a lot more. He drove by with a fucking, like, a, a Dixie cup. With some change in it and shit. All right. But also about five or six razor blades. So they fucking reach in and grab that shit. I saw him do that shit twice. I was like, Jesus. That's fucked up. It is fucked up. It is fucked up. This isn't the same guy that pissed in the sink. No, no. (laughs) This is different guy. That's fucked up. Yeah, this was Texas. But yeah. I'm going to help. I still got to say. Dude, I love you, man. Dude, (laughs) your mayhem story last week in the fucking bonus episode. Of shitting in your pants. <laughs> <and> the- <laughs> right, just a random, like, I got to talk about that. That was fucking funny. I man. listened that to that again. Stuff. I was telling them to be really good. I think, I think that beat my Burger King one. <laughs> I, was, I think so, too. I, I was <laughs> listening to it again today, because that's when I listened to the new, you know. And I was like, man, that's fucked up, but that was a good story, really. Yeah, though. Like, no, it was like, funny, really, man. It was yeah. good. Yeah. It was yeah. funny. Yeah. I took that one home. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I told everybody at the home. Okay, like, no, you gotta hear this. CK, shit. I said I gained my humility because you've told so much stuff. I can't, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, guys, I think we tore up some good names. So I think it's time to hit that outro. Fucking Solstice, man. Yeah. A band uh, I didn't know much about until recently. Uh, not, a, not a new band, but just a band I was not real familiar with, but pretty impressive. And like Cash was saying earlier, dude, like we saw them at uh, Summer... Or, uh, Spring Bash. Spring Bash. Riffs on Riffs. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that Fucking song badass, is called dude. Cleansed of Impurity, so definitely check them out. Uh, digging on that for sure. Uh, big thanks, Justin Morris, coming Fucking in, hanging things, out. Dude. Fuck yeah. Thank um, you, guys. And for suggesting Brooders or Brody for Fuck the yeah. uh, feature. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I had a good ass. time. Yeah, I think that it was, was a fun. good one, man. It's always oh. fun. And we'll have to have you come back and, and do this again. And next time you come in, you promised a I mayhem will. story. So we'll have a good yeah, mayhem yeah, story. Yeah. They're well, like, oh, wait, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> yeah. no, it's all good, brother, dude. It's all good, brother. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good having you in here, dude. Fuck yeah, man. We love having friends. 
Yeah, yeah. And CK and Joey, of course, always good to have you guys along for the ride. And Michael, the trusty sidekick over here. He's a lot of fun, too. Tons drinking, of fun. Drinking it's, pretty the, weird. Uh, it's pretty weird. We're <laughs> sitting here trying to report, record a podcast, and he's over here just jerking off in the corner. Yeah, it is a little <laughs> like, uncomfortable. What the hell is happening, It's a little bro. uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Bumper music tonight by Nasty Savage. Decapitated and Solstice. Yes, uh. And uh, Chris, who plays uh, that, uh, that intro music for CK? Uh, Chris I. No. <laughs> Chrysix, man. Chrysix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the Murder Metal Mayhem intro, CK, is by whom? No motherfucking 12. There we go. There we go. Go check out SpellboundEffectsAndArt.com for their incredible online catalog of silicone body parts, hands, feet, Heads, fingers, dicks, and whatever else you desire. Di- Justin, I threw the dick at you earlier, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> Keep that between us. Tony, <laughs> Tony has amazing Ed Gein inspired right. stuff <laughs> like human skin lamps, aprons, and more. So go check it out now. Spellbound Effects and Art.com. Thanks to everybody listening. Again, we broke our record with almost 5,000 listens this last week. That's really awesome. We do really appreciate it. We continue to dominate and see how many of you guys are getting your murder on every week. It just really makes us want to keep doing this shit. So, very, we very love cool. love that shit. Thank you. Uh, Chris, do you want to read that first comment there? Uh, Lori Lamperto? Yeah. I'm sorry, Lamperto. I can't. Lamperto, Lamperto maybe? Uh, sorry, I can't. Lamperto. Pronu- My pronunciation ain't so good. Lori Pandora 75 says uh this podcast uh, this podcast kills all i love it i started listening to it a month ago and i'm still almost halfway through all your episodes so good horns from holy shit san, san antonio. antonio fuck yeah i thought that said satan <laughs> <laughs> well that was yeah that's awesome Thank i'm you, glad Lori. she's digging on that uh, Thank justin you, what about the next one dude uh metal demon 666 commented I love when you guys talked about Morbid Angel. Can you do more segments on old school death metal? CK rules. Nice. I agree with that. CK Thanks. Rules. Appreciate the I comment. I agree with that yeah. as well. We, we have done like all the pretty much the... Um, the staples, done, like, all, yeah. All the, um, the Florida. Florida ones. But but there's a couple that, no, that I got nobody. on my list that, that we'll be doing. And if anybody has a band, they could suggest it. And, um, yeah. You know, if, if I'm able to do it, I'll do it. Acid Bath and Dax Riggs. That that's actually on my list. Okay, because I've been suggesting it since day one. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Justin is you know, like now I'm uh, actually uh, telling you, look, <laughs> do this band. Now I'm, I'm gonna because, message you no, all the I, time. Yeah. When I do it, it's gonna be Acid Bath, Dax Riggs, and um. All the, and the other band. What the fuck? Go Agents horror. of Oblivion. And, go uh, go horror. Go horror. Oh, go horror. Yeah. Go horror. Okay. All right. God, I cool. love that band. I can't remember. Fucking Keen will bring him already. What <coughs> CK, what about that next one? This is kind of for you here. Um, I can't wait for the new Fates Warning. Fuck, neither can I. I'm fucking <laughs> stoked about it. Right. Will CK review it on his Facebook Live videos? I got two things. Does a bear shit in the woods? <laughs> right. uh, I, don't two, I don't know. I don't know. It is a frog's ass watertight. The question, the answer to both those questions are yes, I will. <laughs> I don't know. We got this brown bear walking around the fucking cornfields in Illinois. And that it was life crazy. in still water. Seventy eight was the commenter there for that one. Very good. And then yeah. Joey, what about the last one, brother? Uh, Randy Coleridge commented, "Love you guys all the way from the UK." A mate of mine told me about MMM, and there's about ten of my friends totally hooked on it. Awesome. Fuck yeah, dude. Thank That's you for very coming cool. over the pond and listening to it. Fuck yeah. Love from the UK. Gotta love it. Now, we got a really nice comment on Facebook that I wanted to read in its entirety on the show. Huge thanks to a new listener, Darla Dent Chasteen. She's also one of the people that's been uh, mentioned here in the show for uh, giving us a couple of random numbers right. for Killer Cage Match. So this was from uh, Darla says uh just discovered you guys heard four episodes so far excited about going back and listening to all of them it feels like i'm hanging out with my guy friends and talking about my two favorite topics murder and metal great podcast 
I'm an instant fan. That was a really cool fucking. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. And Joey, you had a really Joey good one really from good another listener that we know. Himself. Yeah, mine's yeah. A, it, she co-hosted the show with us because she won the March Mayhem yep. uh, contest. Stephanie. Stephanie Ruskinoff. So yeah, of course she won the the. The March Mayhem. March Mayhem. Always and been an She did the uh, uh, Eileen Warnos. Right. Yeah, what's up? Mm -hmm. yeah, what's up? So yeah, that was awesome. Did. Anyway, she just. She beat you, Justin. She did. Yeah. <laughs> we beat you. Yeah. <laughs> you picked up a lucky penny that day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so she uh, she just sent me this in a, in a, you know, an email or whatever, but I found it really funny. Yeah. So I thought we would read it here on the uh, show. And sure. Stephanie's a huge fan of the show and listener. Fuck so. yeah, she understands. So she was like, uh, so I was listening to the podcast before bed yesterday and had a fucked up dream. I had a dream I was watching a video you had on YouTube and decided to make a video commenting about it or something for some project. I posted the video and then one minute after it was posted, I tried to delete it. But it was on a laptop that was slower than a dinosaur, probably infected with syphilis. Uh, and in the meantime, my phone was ringing. So I answered the phone, and it was you saying, who the fuck posted that video talking about my shit? <laughs> and you were pissed as fuck. And I kept apologizing and telling you I was trying to delete it, but the computer kept freezing. It wouldn't delete the video. You were so pissed on the phone yelling at me to delete the video, and I couldn't think... It was, and she said, I think it was because I heard Pete talk about how he listened to that husband and wife podcast and it sucked so bad. Where the rest <laughs> came from, I don't so know, but good. I woke up laughing. <laughs> so, yeah, so she shared that, and yeah, I thought that was pretty hilarious. That is hilarious. really cool. Steph Very cool. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, Stephanie's that, awesome. Hell yeah, dude. You're great, dude. Thank you for fucking being a fucking champion, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Now, don't forget to check out MurderMetalMayhem.com. Listen to all our episodes of bonus content. Also, go check out our YouTube YouTube channel and subscribe follow us on twitter at get your murder on and like us on facebook join that 666 club we've been talking about support the podcast three bucks a month on patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem and all these links we've been talking about are always in the episode description uh, don't miss next week with our feature on the new york slayer joel rifkin should be He's a good a nasty one motherfucker very Plus, we got He's CK talking some Cro Mag, so it's going to be an all New York episode. CK should be fun. Uh, definitely ready for that. Um, and I had to destroy another karaoke song this week, and I was trying to think of a good one to tie in with Bruiser Brody. And I thought of this because this is pretty much sums up what happened to him. Uh, so crank it the fuck up. And until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And keep your wrestling last fence. Stabbing a motherfucker in the gut.
But you ain't got the guts She can't dig it at you night and day Enough to drive you nuts Pick up the phone, leave her alone It's time you made a stand For a fee, I'm happy to be Your back to me Dirty deeds and the done dirt cheap. Dirty deeds and the done dirt cheap. Dirty deeds and the done dirt cheap. Concrete shoes, cyanide, TNT. It dies. Contracts, high voltage. Dirty deeds.